it's time to continue our adventure, exploring the land of mist. We are currently in the library, where we left off. Last time we discovered this place, discovered a blue book and a red book, and we want to find the blue and red pages to complete. We've been down this way toward the dock, and we've been this way toward the rocket ship. Now I want to look at this area here. A trail leading down from the library leads to pool of water with a ship in it that has a striking resemblance to the ship over here, just past the dock. All we can see of it is some poles or masts and the crow's nest. And that's all we can really see above the water here as well. On either side of the pool, there's these columns. And each column seems to have a symbol, an image in front of it. Right here looks like an ostrich, a cross, a leaf, an arrow, an anchor, an insect, a snake. the button, the image turns green instead of red. But I don't know what that does. Here we have another marker, like we've been seeing. I think this is, let's see, one, two, three. This is marker number five that we found so far. Marker number six. It's in front of this, uh, looks like maybe Maybe an electrical shack. That leads down a stairway to a door. Entering the door, we a console. There are two gauges and two columns of buttons. If I press the first button, the gauges turn to ten. 
17, I'm not sure what happened there, but it seemed like this button increased the numbers by one, this button increased the numbers by two. Ten, seven, eight, sixteen, five, one, two, twenty-two, nineteen. buttons. So I think I'm actually going to get a notepad and write them down just in case I need them later. We have our two cages. of buttons. This first button adds ten. Now, I am assuming that these remain constant, and I don't want to assume that, so I'm going to check them. If I click this button and this button, it should equal 10. Okay. And if I click this button and this button, it should equal... Okay, so it looks like they remain constant, but what concerns me now is the fact that this gauge is no longer moving at all anymore. I seem to have overloaded it in my eagerness to push more buttons. So. Let's see, maybe there's a way we can do something about it. Oh, here's a diagram. Power. Power to ship. Generator switches. 
Now I see here that the numbers on this diagram don't correspond to the numbers that the switches add to the gauges. But we can conclude, I think, that the left gauge is the power gauge, and the right gauge is the power to ship. So I seem to have turned, I can still turn on the power in general, but the power to the ship remains off. I bet I blew a few we can find a fuse box. Oh. It's a uh, fully night outside. It's rather lovely in the dark. Possibly that switch we saw earlier is the fuse breaker. I'm gonna try it out. Looks like my flashlight came on. Do uh, you think there's a keyboard shortcut to. sound like it did anything, but that's, uh, that doesn't mean it didn't do anything, so let's see. They both are again. And I'm wondering if I simply need to make it to a hundred. here and see if I can make that happen. So if we go with 10, 22, 16, we're at 48, 9 takes us to 57, plus 8. Oh, okay, okay. So it looks like maybe we need to hit 60 instead of 100. box, which is not, in fact, a box at all. It's a switch on a power line, which uh, doesn't seem like the safest way to do it, but um, hey, I didn't write the island. This place really is beautiful. sort of glowing creatures flying through the sky.
Okay, so... Okay, they're still not... it's still not working. Um... What did I do last time that made it work? I... I thought I just hit the... hit the breaker switch. It's, uh... Really discouraging here. Um, Folks, it looks like I broke it. And I don't know how to fix it. I hope there's something I just haven't figured out and it's not just a just a glitch or something. That would be difficult to deal with. I would have to start over again. Here's another marker switch. I think this is number seven. Inside this cabin, we have a number of different devices here. There's a image of what looks like a tree. This sort of looks like a furnace, but it's a, it's pressurized, it's, PSI is a, it's an air pressure measurement. There's a valve, and a safe. I wonder what's in there. Okay. I've turned the wheel all the way to the right, and nothing has happened. Back all the way to the left. There doesn't seem to be much I can click on here. Or here. So... cabin is, oh, this is a tree, like the image that we saw in the cabin. Very big, big, tall tree with a, a little brick pavilion built around it. And at the very 
edge of the island we have this clock tower which is unreachable because apparently I can't swim so instead there's some sort of oh there's a oh there's a it uh, changes the time and then I press a button so perhaps I simply change change it to the right time and maybe the clock tower will open or there will be a bridge to it I also see another marker over there which I think is number 8 if I'm keeping count correctly and this seems to be the edge of the island it's a uh, it's not a huge place but it seems full of mystery and it's so peaceful slash spooky in here I can't figure out what to do with the rocket ship I'm gonna go over here and still can't open it I'm going to flip the marker switch and I'm gonna see what that does if anything I mean it has to do something right switch again to try to get it to work Because it worked that first time, I would guess that it's probably a glitch, and that's troubling to me. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to check that for a second. I'm going to load my first game here. it up somehow, so uh, I've reloaded my other game and my plan was to try to get to 60 so if I go 10 plus 22 plus 16 we're at 48 what if we try Plus nine and then plus two and plus one. Oh. Apparently 
I was going for 59. Seems a little arbitrary to me. I mean, 60 is sort of arbitrary too, but at least it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a time measurement at least. There's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. 59... 59... what? But I guess that's just the specifications for what I, I think is the rocket because this breaker switch seems attached to the rocket and attached to this power underground shack for 59, so 10, plus 22, plus 16, plus 9, plus 2, and we've hit 59. I don't know what 59 does, or what units that's in, but we're gonna go see if the spaceship works, or at least if it I don't know, opens the door or something. That startled me. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is very lovely, very peaceful, but it, there, there is a, a spooky element to it, possibly just because of the isolation. side here has a, um, um, a series of switches that play a different tone depending on their location. And if I pull this lever, huh, that, uh, that doesn't sound very melodic illustrates the concept, I think. Oh, that sounds creepy. It's not helping the... Whoa. Creepy vibe. Uh, now I'm staring into a dark glass here. I can't tell if it's just the light reflecting or if I'm looking into a tunnel from somewhere. I don't know where, though, the, the ship is facing the empty ocean, so maybe it's just a reflection of the inside of the spaceship. Ah, yep, looks like it. You will notice that uh, there's no player character reflected. I'm sure that's just an oversight. Possibly a intentional oversight on the part of the programmers, but it also sort of adds to the spooky effect. Okay, so what happens if I... We've got the pipe organ noises over there. What happens if I...
looks like I'm going to have to uh, either hear some music somewhere and try to play it back, or find some music, like some sheet music perhaps. I really don't know. But whenever we get a clue about it, the rocket ship will be here waiting for us. Looking at it, I don't think it's a mobile rocket ship. It's got these uh, power lines connected to it that it apparently needs the power from in order to function. And it's sort of just resting here on the stone or the concrete. Perhaps it's just a very stylized music room. But then what's this viewing screen or mirror or window? We'll find out later. Let's see, I feel like I've visited almost every place now, and I haven't really picked up any clues. But here's one, the tower rotation map. I don't, I don't think the rocket ship was here before. Can I do that? Is that what I do? Okay, let's go see about the tower. Here we go. I don't know, this part just freaks me out. It makes me feel sort of claustrophobic and this is a sort of reality warping picture, right? I mean, I guess the whole point of this game is that Reality can be traveled through and to different places, but okay. moving from the library to the Just a blank wall. Okay, so pointing the tower at the ship doesn't do anything, but the tower appears on the tower rotation map for some reason. What that reason is, I just... I don't know.
I guess I didn't rotate it far enough. That looks like it'll probably do something. This is, uh, sort of how it is. Oh, we're rotating. saying this is sort of how it is with uh, me and puzzle games. A lot of trial and error. But at least in this game it doesn't seem to punish the errors too badly, which is nice. Okay, so we've got this window pointing out oh, toward the toward the ship, toward the rocket ship. We can see it. So on the other side... <laughs> on the other side, it tells us the number and the units of what is needed to power... to power the rocket ship, so that's... That would be very useful if we hadn't done that already. Uh, so I'm not gonna write that down because we already figured it out. Uh, it does tell us that it's volts, so that was something I was curious about, but otherwise not, not extraordinarily helpful to us at this point. But does indicate that wherever we point the tower will give us a clue about whatever it is that the tower that the, that the library window here is looking at. And that is useful to us. So this, this tower rotation map, the rocket ship appeared here and I thought it either did that because we powered the rocket ship or we flipped the marker switch. Uh, but since the tower rotation told us the information that we would have needed to power the ship. I think it's more likely that it was the marker switch that placed it on the tower rotation map. So what I'm going to do is go back to the very first marker switch that we found and flip the switch and then come back here and see if the map is different. the ship, the, uh, the miniature version of which we saw in the pool earlier. And here's the first marker switch we encountered. Oh, there's that tree with the pavilion around it. I 
hadn't noticed it from this angle earlier. And there it is. The dock is there on the, uh, on the tower rotation map, so let's do this. From here we can see visuals are a little wonky here. I don't I don't think that's how the opticals are supposed to work, but anyway, um so there's the ship down there in the water and the dock and the is that the, uh, it was sort of like a planetarium, but it didn't show us the stars in the sky as the, well, I guess, no, it was basically a planetarium. But I think we're supposed to be looking at the ship, the sunken ship. And here we have, uh, we have a series of dates. I'm going to write these down. October 11th, 
into the planetarium. But I... I find it thematically interesting that uh, we're going to be looking at star patterns in relation to this sunken sailing ship because historically ships on the ocean have used the stars to navigate Now it's just about morning I wonder if we could Watch the sunrise. I think we can see the light moving here as it falls upon the building and changes. Speed this up a little so you guys can see. Here's our island, bathed in the morning light. I really, really like it here. If you have made it this far, thank you for sharing the sunrise with me. Our next step is to enter the planetarium and put in the dates that we found. But I think I'm going to leave that for the next video. Right now, I'm going to go back to the library read the next book on the bookshelf. The second book here is, looks like it's called The Stone Ship A. Emmet was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were. A group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of a large sea. This was where Emmet lived. He enjoyed his life. 
Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks, as it was never too far of a distance. One day, another person appeared on the rocks for no apparent reason to Emmett. Emmett named this new person Branch. Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live, also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their world, and the water was always dazzlingly clear, allowing them to see almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them. Though the sun always shone, it was never too hot for the boys. A light breeze always came from the north and cooled the area down. One day, while Branch was swimming and having fun in the water, he noticed another boy swimming. Branch brought the new boy to Emmett to find out what to call the new boy. Emmett said the boy should be called Will. Will was soon a part of the group, and all three of the boys swam and enjoyed their perfect world. At least, that is the story I was told when I arrived today on the island. Emmett, Branch, and Will were surprised to see me at first, but even before the night ended, we were all becoming good friends. Today, the second day on this newly created age, a strange thing happened. It was not strange to me, but the three boys did not understand what was happening. While I was relaxing under a large tree on one of the smaller rock islands, it began to rain. It was a nice rain that lasted for about an hour in the morning. I explained to the boys that the rain was not harmful, yet they obviously still feared it. Before going to sleep tonight, I told the boys I would leave the following day. I told them that while I was gone, I would make a surprising change in their world. They didn't understand. Not that I expected them to. I still do not fully understand what happened today. I was experimenting with the art, testing the limits of the rules as dictated to me by father. I attempted to create a boat by writing it into the world. I thought everything was planned correctly, yet somehow the boat had become gripped by the rock and broken in half. Although this test did not turn out as I had hoped, I now have answers to a few of the questions my father never answered. As for the boat, I can see the boys enjoy it anyway, and with that I am pleased. They have played on it all day. Even though the boat cannot move, I have enjoyed studying from it. It is a much sturdier platform than the jagged rock. In the course of my observations, I have learned some very interesting things regarding the solar system of this age. There's a diagram, and the note says, Submersible Lamp. The nights are absolutely beautiful here. I have made, made note of and named a number of constellations that pass above me. Also during the night, I catch glimmers of light from the horizon, which I have not been able to discover if it is created by some natural phenomenon, or by additional people on far-off islands or rocks. I should very much like to discover which. I rather suspect it is additional people, which would explain the appearance of Branch and Will. The rain today was slightly heavier than usual. Just when the boys were getting used to the light rains, a small storm arrived. They were frightened of the heavier rain, not to mention the thunder and lightning. If rain has never fallen here until recently, as the boys tell me, I would like to discover why it is falling now. Regardless, I have decided to return home for a short while. 
I have also been thinking of some plans for a lighthouse that I hope to construct soon. I think that perhaps by shining a bright light toward the horizon, it might prove my suspicions regarding additional inhabitants. They would be curious about the light, and travel to discover its source, if they have the means. There's an image of the lighthouse. I returned with many tools that I will need for construction of the lighthouse. I have decided that once the lighthouse is completed, I will leave for some time, and let the world's own imagination have control. We have worked three weeks on the lighthouse now, and are making great progress. The rock that we are building on seems to not be as secure as I would like. I have had to alter my plans slightly, but those alterations pose no real problem. There's another diagram. The note says, light. The boys are quite strong, and have been helping me immensely. I estimate construction will be done within two days. The lighthouse is finished, and we are all proud of our creation. The boys are amazed at the structure wrought from rock with their own hands. That evening, we powered up the generator much to the boy's dread at first, and shined a great light to the horizon for many hours. I stayed the night in the top of the lighthouse, and in the morning awoke to observe the sunrise without my being coated with the chilly blanket of ocean dew I had become accustomed to. It was Will who first saw the girl. She was swimming not far from the boat, where Will was getting ready to hunt for fish. Then Will noticed a man not far away from the girl. Emmett was very pleased to meet the additional neighbors. I feel pleased to leave this age. I have set in motion events that have nothing to do with writing or the art, that will have a more profound impact on this world than I could have ever written. I think of it I think of it, this age, as a gift to myself that I will wrap up and open some day in the future, only to discover that it has changed so much that indeed it is a surprise. Besides, I have yet another new age that awaits me. It seems I'm going to need some way to travel underwater in this new age, and so much planning is in order. Stone Ship Age, Bird's Eye View You can see here the ship that uh, the rock grabbed and broke. And then there's some bridges here to what look like some other buildings. Probably one of these is the lighthouse, maybe the big one here. And it looks like there's also some stairs that lead up to the top of the great rock. It has been ten years since I left this age, which I have since called the Stone Ship Age. Upon returning, I cannot believe the changes that have taken place. The original three boys have grown into adults, and there are many new faces that I do not recognize. Branch told me that it has not rained for seven years, and the cool breezes are back again. They are all very content, and have been serving me with new foods, and showing me new materials they have discovered. It even seems they have found gold somewhere. I see it in many forms around the island. My lighthouse has been kept in perfect condition, and it looks as if they have tried their very best to keep it so. Yet I have noted that the entire rock it was built on has sunk approximately 40 or 50 centimeters. After a wonderful visit with my old friends, I wonder aloud with them what things will be like here in another ten years. This section of the book is called Constellations. He said that he 
made notes of the stars on this world, uh, this age, I guess it's called. So this one is an anchor. I snake insect cross arrow bird maybe not an ostrich but a bird and a leaf and it appears these are the same symbols that are outside the library Exploration.